Winners of this year's Queen's, uh, Queen Elizabeth Prize for Engineering will be announced in London this afternoon. It's awarded every two years. It aims to raise the profile of the sector and inspire young people to work in the industry. And with us now? Who is with us now? Let's tell you. One of the judges is Professor Brian Cox. Uh, Brian, a very good morning to you. Um, when we think of engineering, if you're a young person considering what kind of career you're going to forge your head in, uh, engineering isn't necessarily the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, and we can talk about the reasons for that. Is it a want of pay? Is it status? Is it, is it simply too hard work? What's going on? I think it's just a lack of information. Um, engineering occasionally can conjure up images of steam engines and Brunel, you know, that it has in some sense an old-fashioned image, completely wrong. Um, engineering is really the creation of everything that we think of and use in our society. So it can be software engineering, it can be the, the software that goes inside mobile phones, it can be the mobile phones themselves, it can be spacecraft manufacture. I mean, did, did you know that one of the, the biggest growth industries of the UK is the manufacture of small satellites? We're world leading at that. And sometimes when I go into schools and I talk about science and engineering, and I say, well, would any of you like a job building spacecraft? Then a lot of hands go up. Yeah. Uh, in fact, our spacecraft industry is, is th there are vacancies available. Th this is the key, I think, to the Queen Elizabeth Prize. Um, we, we need 1.25 million more um, trained people in science and engineering in five years' time in order to fill the demand currently in our economy which is a good thing because it means our economy is growing in the high-tech areas that we want. But it's also a concern because there are 1.25 million unfilled vac vacancies well, or there I, will I, be in five I, years' I've time. I've read somewhere 600,000 unfilled vacant vacancies. I mean, you can sort of sort the so, PR, can't you, and say, OK, no, it's no. not just about the big pistons and the grimy stuff. It's sexy. It's a much broader uh, tableau than you think. But at the end of the day, when you've got your essential economics, that, dismal of, uh, that most dismal of sciences, tell is that if you've got a shortage of something, the best way of curing that is to pay more. It really comes down to pay. Well, uh, I, these jobs are well-paid jobs. They're, the, they're, they're the, what the government call knowledge-intensive services and industry jobs. So they're, they're the best-paid jobs in our economy. They're also, we're putting aside finance, let's say, but even in finance, it's people with STEM degrees that are going into that area. But putting aside that, so, so these are the areas that we know will grow our economy. These are the areas that Britain can compete in, high-skilled, highly educated workforce. So the challenge, really, is to, is to get into the schools and then through to the universities. First of all, to enthuse those children to say, these are the areas, if, if you're doing physics and maths, chemistry, engineering, mathematics, the STEM subjects, then there are vacancies available, highly paid vacancies, uh, and secondly, to make sure that we invest in education all the way through from schools and through to universities to enable those, that, that the workforce of the future to be trained and made available to industry. And I'll say one more thing, that we, we live, of course, in a globalised world. Um, so industries, big multinational industries who employ in this high-skilled sector, they move to where the educated workforce exists. Yeah. So we're fortunate with the QE Prize that although it's an international prize, we've got it in Britain, and that means that we can use it to promote these areas so those industries will be attracted to this country and pay the wages that you suggest. Yeah. I, I, I can see like why you want to attract, you know, encourage young people to go into the sciences. I've got you know, an eldest daughter who's doing three sciences, she hopes, for, for A-level, but I don't see how a prize, uh, and that's what we're talking about, a prize will necessarily see, help people like her see engineering as more sexy. There's, there's a sort of slight logic air gap there. Fill it for us if you can. Well, the, if you look at the Nobel Prizes, for example, which are based in Sweden, what they do is they shine a light, a media light, if you like, on areas of research. The Nobel Prize for Physics was won a couple of years ago by a colleague of mine, two colleagues of mine at Manchester University for the discovery of graphene, a new form of carbon. So in the same way, the Queen Elizabeth Prize is a Nobel Prize for Engineering. So it highlights particular areas of work, uh, particular areas of, of, of achievement. The, 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 the outline, by the way, is that we award the Queen Elizabeth Prize to things that have already made a significant benefit globally to humanity. That's the, the, the raison d'etre of the prize, if you like. So the idea is it shines a light. It's information. It's about saying this is what engineering is. It's not um, just steam engines or you know, the, 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 the engineering of old. It is now basically the creation, the designing and creation of everything we take for granted in our technological society. So you want more pe young people to embrace engineering. I suppose 
The demographic cake is only so big, though, isn't it? If, if you have more young people choosing engineering, that's fewer young people who will be going into the humanities and the creative industries. And sitting in the same seat that you're in today, tomorrow, we may have somebody from advertising or the arts saying, you know, come here, we need young people to go into the arts. Don't do boring engineering, do some humanities subject, because that's where it's needed. I don't think we're at that point yet. So the, at the moment, we're at the point where our economy is based, half of it, is based on what we call knowledge intensive services and industry which includes as you say the creative industries but also science and engineering half of it the government all parties there's agreement on this want to grow that piece of the cake why because that's the way that advanced economies like ours compete globally in the future so there's plenty of slack to be taken up we're certainly not at the point where there's competition for high skilled labor between the humanities and the sciences and engineering that's not where we are we're at the point where we need to build a more educated workforce. We've got a long way to go yet. Uh, and what do you say to those, again, those young people who are sold on your message? They've bought your message. Okay, Brian Cox has persuaded me, engineering's sexy, okay. But they have grave misgivings about their maths. They just don't think they've got the maths to be a good engineer. Uh, and they've got a feeling, and it may be a feeling that's rooted in some sound logic, that actually, if they're, if they're not good at it, it's not something they can necessarily work on and learn. You're either good at maths or you're not. If you're good at maths, then engineering's open to you, that's fine. If you're not, you're always going to struggle. It's a, it's a central misconception, this, I think, about mathematics. I myself didn't think I was good enough at mathematics at school to go on to do physics at university. And actually I discovered quite late in life that mathematics is something, it, you're right, it's the language of science and engineering, but it's something that can, comes to us through practice. I often make the analogy of playing a piano. Um, you, no one, virtually no one, sits down in front of a piano and can play it. You have to practice and learn. It's the same with mathematics. And I would say that, that it becomes more enjoyable and easier the more you practice. And so if you don't think you're good at it, it is most likely because you haven't just put that extra bit of work in. Science and engineering need a bit of work. Maths needs a bit of work. But it's not something I think very few, very few people are naturally brilliant mathematicians. You don't need to be a naturally brilliant mathematician. You just need to put the practice in. And then these careers will open up in front of you. Uh, and just one final thought, really. I mean, we're talking just exclusively at the moment about young people. But there may be people listening to you uh, a little bit older, perhaps not sure they did the right thing at, you know, after school or after university, back the wrong horse, they're unhappy in their job, thinking about a career change, into engineering. How easy is it for them? Um, it's not as easy as it is at the age of 18 is the honest answer. I, I regret that actually. But there are schemes and, and government are rightly looking at this. How do you retrain a workforce? Because I should say we're not talking about um, 1.25 million PhDs here. We're talking about um, 1.25 million uh, skilled people all the way through, from apprenticeships all the way through to researchers. So there, there are opportunities at every at every level, whether you like to be, to be more practical or you like to be more theoretical. So the, the training, I think the, the, the opportunities are opening up, but you're right to highlight that I think we need to do more. And again, just to finish, that, that I think that's one of the important things about the QE Prize. It's not only about inspiring children, it's about inspiring parents and about inspiring policy makers and government and shining a light on this necessary area of the economy. Brian Cox is one of the judges on the Queen Elizabeth Engineering Award. We presume it means... Queen Elizabeth II, I guess. I Brian. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, which engineering? <laughs> <laughs> Queen Thanks Elizabeth. Thanks so much. Love you. Okay. Sort you. Thanks a lot. Thanks.